Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, excited for the season to get started. It was great listening to all our other coaches and spring teams um, and what they're looking forward to, and as Derek alluded to, and Steve, I think we all feed off each other. It's awesome to have uh, our athletic program having so much widespread success, and I think the athletes see that, and you know they get the same type strength coaches that are in there motivating them. And so we're excited about our season. Um, but as with any season, um, we've got our challenges in front of us with a tough schedule. We've got an experienced group back, especially with these two seniors. Um, Justin has had a great year for us at first base, and uh, he's one of our team leaders in the infield. Um, if you know a lot about baseball, your infield is only good as your first baseman is, and Justin does a great job picking up any short hop throws and so forth. He's a very vocal, uh, and communication on defense is big in baseball. <clears throat> Jared's been with us now. This is his third year. He started out at UCF and uh, had Tommy John and redshirted there one year, uh, but he's been great. He was in the rotation two years ago, and last year talked to him about moving to the bullpen and thought he could bring a lot more value to us. Um, and he was more than welcome to do that and happy to do that. We used him in long relief, short relief, might have closed a game or two. Uh, we wouldn't have won the regular season without him. Um, I think the stats going into the postseason, he had um, stranded, uh, I don't know how many, 17 of 18 runners he inherited, um, had a minuscule ERA, and just did a great job shutting it down and throwing strikes like we talk about. Um, but we got a lot of, a lot of guys back, a lot of experience. Got to host the conference tournament last year. And as with, you know, any year baseball, you know, one little key thing here or there in a game can can turn and make the difference. And our postseason, I think, centered around we didn't put it all together at the same time. In the conference tournament, we pitched well, made a key defensive mistake in two one-run ball game losses late in the game. Didn't get a key hit when we needed. Um, and uh, Justin hit a walk-off grand slam in the first game against Lee after we had a lead and blew the lead. And then we go to the regional, and we swung the bat, I think, out of the uh, 56 teams that go to the regional. I read a stat where it said we had the fourth highest batting average, um, but we didn't pitch as good. And uh, we ran into a buzzsaw, eventual national champion, Nova Southeastern, played them in the second game. And uh, J JT Granat, that's another senior in our rotation, uh, Really had his stuff going in the first three innings, and I think he'd struck out four or five, and then the rain hit on Friday night. And we waited around for two hours to try to get the game restarted. Couldn't, so we had to restart the game the next morning. And I talked to the team about the first couple innings is going to be the momentum swing of this game. And uh, sure enough, uh, they hit a solo home run, I think, and took the lead. And we were kind of playing catch up, and they ended up beating a 6-4. And you know, you get in the loser's bracket within the first two games in a regional, it's tough coming back. So this year is, again, just, you know, taking each game and each series one game at a time and, and hoping to uh, get in a position to try to win a championship at the end. You've been there before, and we've talked about teams, and you've been really candid about what kind of team you have going into the year. What do you, what do you like about this group, and, and uh, do you feel like you have that kind of balance? What I like about this group is um, they're confident. Um, what I don't like is um, they test me. <laughs> they t uh, but, you know, honestly, you know, you talk about uh, you want your guys to have a little bit of uh, bravado in them, you know, and, and want to have a little bit of maybe, I don't know the right word, cockiness or arrogance, but then you also talk every day about being humble. But you don't want them going in with their head down and their chin low and acting like they don't have confidence. So it's that fine line. And, you know, all we've talked about is the seniors. We've got 11 of them. You know, what's their legacy going to be? And they're kind of standing on the shoulders of the teams before them and the, you know, facility improvements and, and the strength coaches and all the things the other coaches talked about that our great administration has done for us has all been built from success of previous teams. and. Um, you know, it's obvious they want to have good individual seasons, but as I always try to preach, it's uh, it'll take care of itself if the team has success. And I think we had the most all-conference selections last year after winning the regular season. I think all that's going to happen if the team has success. And, and I truly believe they want that, you know, and, and it's just uh, – I mean, at our, at our level, with only 9.0 scholarships, we don't have a tremendous amount of depth. I think the disparity this year is we have a lot of upperclassmen with a great front – nine, 10, 11 guys, plus a great 
pitching staff, but the drop off is freshmen and sophomores behind them that um, you know need need some more seasoning. So um, we hope we don't hit the injury bug. Oh, I definitely think so. Um, but again, the big challenge of this team is the bullseyes on their back. Um, and whether it's, a, you know, we have players that we've recruited and we're familiar with, like Brian Browning that was at Northwest Florida State with JT Granat and local catcher Tanner Halstead that played on that team. They won a national championship. He transferred back for his senior year. Tanner did uh, from South Alabama. Um, but Brian Browning came back from Ole Miss, two senior transfers that all have great, you know, Ability, but you know, as I told him, you know, there's going to be D in D2. The, the players always talk about, oh, this guy thinks he's big time. He's from Ole Miss, or you know, and and they look for extra motivation to want to beat him. And then added to the fact of the players that were are returning, these guys that had great years, they're not going to slip up on anybody. And um, so it's just a matter of keeping their focus on what they can control within that bubble, I guess you would say, uh, of staying within their game and being who they are and working together. Well, uh, coming into this league, it was uh, I was told that it's a lot different, you know, and uh, we get to the regional, you know, we just didn't know what to expect, you know, a lot of new guys last year, so the league was a little bit different, but getting the experience from the regional, you know, it gives you some confidence going into this year, but at the same time, you know, it's a new year, you know, we've got to worry about each and every day. Mike, since you're going to open next week uh, at home against the team that you play, you start the year a lot. How big of a series is it? I mean, I think, yeah, I think it's a big series. And I mean, it's an interstate rival, a South region opponent. We only have the first two weekends to have an opportunity to play um, outside the conference. And I really like to try to, you know, get, you know, the South region Sunshine State teams. Last year was Florida Southern and Tampa. You know, lost two close ball games here at home to Tampa. Um, and ended up still being the number two seed. You know, and I talk to these guys all the time about you never know, it could be a couple game swing that can be the difference in hosting the regional and not. That's not trying to put any pressure on them, but you know, every game matters and that's a tough thing to do for fifty games through a regular season. But I like having, you know, a quality opponent, traditional power like Florida Southern, um, right out of the gate. Um, I think it serves as great motivation for the guys and something to look forward to and um, they beat us two out of three down there last year. Um, the first one being a rain-shortened six-inning game, and it was kind of my suggestion that, hey, if we get through five innings with this rain, we, we traveled all this way, we really want to play three games. We get through five, let's make it official instead of postponing it and having to finish and only one more the next day. And, of course, I think they scored four in the bottom of the six when we had a 5-1 or whatever lead. It was raining. Our guys are sliding all over the place. And as soon as that inning ended, the umpire ball game, you know, what you would expect on the road. And um, so we lost the first two series last year, and the team was really, I think, in shell shock. And then for what they did to come back and never lose another series after that, and, um, you know, we had, I guess, 21 conference road games um, because we had to play an extra series because of having to return to Union. And they're, you know, going 18 and 6, they did on the road. It was just incredible. So this year we get a few more games at home at the Spoon. We get six conference weekends at home at the Spoon. We got a couple of quality opponents with North Georgia and Columbus State in April coming in. Um, so excited to be at home a little more, but we still have some great challenges. And to get where you want to be, you got to prove you can do it on the road and at home. Um, but uh, did you have anything to say about, you know, how you feel about the season? I mean, yeah, we're obviously really excited. We had a really good fall. And at this point, with all the practicing, we're just ready to get started here in a week or two. But I think, like he said, last year we learned a lot. We did what we needed to do in the regular season, winning the GSC title. But we kind of took, I guess we took our foot off the gas pedal, so to speak, when we got to the tournament. So I think that's a learning point for that right there. So I think at this point it's expected. Obviously we want to win the GSC again. We want to win the GSC tournament, ultimately host here at the Spoon and do what we need to do to win a regional and get to the World Series. So I think last year, since we have a senior-laden staff, we know what to expect. And now we're just 
no days off at this point. Um, I didn't mind it. As Coach said, he came to me and he said, brought it up to me. I was because I was in the bullpen at UCF too, so it's not something new to me. But I mean, obviously, I would like to, anyone wants to be a starter, but I, I didn't mind the role. I like my job to go out there and put up a zero, whether we're in the lead or uh, behind to keep us in it. So I didn't mind. It's, I just like going out there, but having a bulldog mentality and keep our guys in it. I would just come back to the same question I asked Steve. You, you've been so invested in the community and the university to, to look around and see this athletic program reach where it is right now. How, I mean, you touched on it a little bit. Just how special is it to see all these teams ranked and, and challenging for championships to, like, to, to, like what's happening right now? Well, I think, you know, and Dave has alluded to it many times, it's a special place. Um, whether you were born and raised here like I was and have seen the growth or, or the coaches that were been here before, you know, I came back with Spoon and they were here when I was a player, some of them. But, um, and I think part of it, I was just thinking, you know, Derek's got coaches that played for him. You know, Brian played for Steve. You know, Melissa's got coaches that played for her and or played in the program. And then I've got coaches that all played in the program except Brady. Um, but he's from Panama City, and we have Caleb Barlow back, and who that was with us in 13 and 14, and his 13 team. We were one win away from at Tampa, you know, trying to beat him the second game on Sunday to go to the World Series again. Um, and so all those guys, you know, hopefully our guys and, and all our athletes can lean on the assistant coaches and the staffs that we've put together because they've been there. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Martin tweeted, you know, he's been tweeting out how many days to go and. Justin's number is 10, and, and he's got a picture of Justin holding the national championship. Uh, and our players get to see that, you know, that it is a tangible thing, that some special things have been accomplished here and by all the sports. And uh, it's not a pipe dream. And so that, that's what's special. You come to work and you feel like you've got a chance every year, you know, to, to win it all. You know, we're not just trying to compete. And other programs that are coming into our conference and you know, they have aspirations, I'm sure, to get there. But, you know, you come to West Florida, no matter what sport it is, our aspirations are to try to be the best. Mm -hmm. And I think the players resonate with that. Town sells itself. University and the football coming on board and the atmosphere downtown. And now it's just it's just an easy sell, other than if we can get the money right and try to finagle all this scholarship stuff, <laughs> you know.